Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good morning for those of us who have joined us from the US. My name is Delia, and on behalf of Education Above All Foundation and UNDP and our students, I would like to thank you for joining this exciting conference, Rethinking Higher Education, A New Way of Learning to Become. Before I start, I would first and foremost like to thank our Palestinian and our Syrian students from across the MENA region who have been working tire tirelessly on designing this conference and series of webinars for you. So we do hope that you enjoy them. Over the past few months, we've all personally and professionally experienced the challenges that COVID-19 have carried with it, and it has undoubtedly changed the way that we view education today. For those of us who already work in extremely difficult contexts, whether they be um, conflict or post-conflict, such as the MENA region, a region that has already um, and um, that has already and continues to suffer from numerous wars, ongoing conflicts, poverty and fam famine, this pandemic has only served to intensify both the daily obstacles and the long-term ones that youth in the Middle East face. What we want to bring across to you today is that it's time that we stop to view our beneficiaries, as they have stated in their own words, as merely human interest stories or only recipients of aid. If we continue to view them as such, then we only serve to fail them alongside the political situations that have already failed them. And we impose on them a forced identity, one born only by war and conflict. What, what we want to bring across to you through these series of webinars is that they are not a lost generation. They are the generation, a generation of resilience, determination and ambition. And on behalf of all our students, I invite you as those who work in INGOs, um, educational experts, policymakers, to truly listen to what they have to say over the next couple of days. We have learned a lot from them. And hopefully, if we listen, we will hear and we will see that there is much more that we can learn from them. And that despite their ongoing hard hardships and ongoing challenges, they have managed to initiate and make real changes within their communities, changes that not only benefit themselves, but benefit their families and their peers and their societies as a whole. So without further ado, to kickstart this conference, I'm extremely excited and honored to introduce our esteemed keynote speaker, UNESCO's Assistant Director General for Education, Ms. Stefania Giannini. Um, I will now hand over to Ms. Stefania. You're live streaming with me, so she should come on in a moment. One second. Ms. Stefania, are you with me? Sorry, if you could just all bear with me while we make sure that she's connected and online. One second. Okay, so our technical team on the ground are just making sure that she's connected. If you could bear with us for a couple of minutes, she should be joining. Um, I just want to check also that all of you have managed to register. There's actually five webinars taking place, two today and three tomorrow. The one that will happen immediately after Ms. Stefania's speech is regarding online learning. We also have one on psychosocial and mental health. And then tomorrow we have one in Arabic for our Arabic speaking audience that will speak generally to the themes. And the last two that we have tomorrow are community in times of crisis and also rethinking employment in terms of the virtual workplace and what we can offer refugees and IDPs in the MENA region. So I am now going to exit this room, but if you could just everyone, if you could all stay online and just be patient with us whilst we make sure that she's on. So I'm going to hand over to Mr. Fania now. Hello. Mr. Fania. Hi, Mr. Fania. Hello. Can you see me? Yes. Yes, definitely. So, How are you? Yes, we struggle a bit, but let me, yeah, let me you, please the story. You my... left me in, in you left me in the room on my own. Okay, so I'm going to leave you to give your keynote speech. First of all, thank you so much. On behalf of Education Above All, UNDP, yeah. 
our students in the MENA region. We're super excited to have you open this conference, give your keynote speech. So I'm going to exit now and leave the floor to you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. So I think we can start. They're giving the floor or whatever. So good morning, everybody, uh, dear students, uh, dear guests, uh, dear colleagues from education above all. It's really a great pleasure for me to be here with all of you, connected uh, with uh, great audience uh, composed by students, uh, faculty, policymakers, and civil society organizations and from all across the region. And let me say that uh, uh, with uh, education above all, uh, there is a, a long-term partnership uh, in, uh, uh, with uh, UNESCO and uh, also with our sister agency, UNDP, and I'm very excited to to, to talk uh, about a critical issue like higher education today with all of us and uh, uh, focusing a bit more on more marginalized youth in the MENA region. And uh, let me say also something more on a personal note. I'm, uh, I'm uh, very pleased to be with you also because uh, as a professor, as a former rector of uh, an international university in my country, Italy, my roots, my life is really in the university environment. So I think that uh, in every position I held uh, in my career, uh, in my life, from minister to my current position as assistant director general at UNESCO, uh, I more than ever see universities being uh, the drivers for development uh, and uh, the main uh, providers of what we really need today, science, research, and uh, knowledge, skills, uh, and everything which can really steer society in a more sustainable and, uh, and just direction uh, in the near future. So let me, let me a bit uh, give to you uh, a picture from uh, this privileged observatory, which is UNESCO. Today, some uh, 2,000, uh, two, uh, two, sorry, 220 million students are enrolled in universities worldwide, a number that has doubled in the last uh, decade and uh, is set to expand. Uh, this region is not is not exception, uh, with an exponential growth uh, of uh, enrollment and uh, and uh, in the number of universities as well. But this progression uh, has been affected at all the other education sector uh, components uh, by uh, a big challenge we are facing today uh, worldwide, which is COVID-19. And, uh, and this challenge definitely brings us together today uh, in unprecedented circumstances. The COVID-19 pandemic, as uh, we said from the very beginning at UNESCO, has amplified fragilities and inequalities across digital, across gender dimension, uh, social and edu edu educational lines, especially in regions uh, which are already affected by conflict. And never before, uh, never before really in the history has education been disrupted at such a scale like now. You remember maybe some numbers UNESCO published and uh, released uh, from the very beginning of the COVID-19 crisis, 1.6 billion students from early childhood university level being out of school because of the COVID. So UNESCO's Institute of Higher Education in Latin America and the Caribbean uh, region estimates now that one quarter of university students in that region will be left out to, due to lack of access to technologies and platforms. And only 75% of institutions have the capacity to offer online education. So this is the challenge we have today, and this is the way we have to address differently thinking and moving and acting differently from the past. A survey still uh, of UNESCO University chairs, you know, it's a network uh, which uh, uh, includes uh, currently more than 700 uh, institutions uh, in the world, found that poor internet connectivity, social isolation, general anxiety, and financial concerns 
were considered among the top challenges facing learners studying remotely. And this is reflected across this region where lack of infrastructures, uh, digital skills, uh, and uh, e-learning platforms, and also access to the internet from home have forced many students to interrupt definitely their studies. While the, this crisis has created a planetary disruption in, our, in higher education, it provides also some important lessons, lessons which are already been learned. And I think that uh, can become a very important uh, point to start uh, to build the post-COVID-19 uh, environment uh, with new model, a so-called new normal, which is uh, in uh, uh, universities, uh, uh, something that we have to take into account and we have to share from the very beginning. It is, this will be my opinion, essential to deliver on the global development agenda. And the role of universities uh, is an es essential one. UNDP has warned uh, that global human development could decline for the first time since the concept has been, was kind in uh, 1990. So it should be a strong disruption in the, in the roadmap of uh, progress and develop, uh, development for, for the humankind. One of the reasons is setbacks to education and learning losses, of course. UNESCO projects now, today, that 17 million children uh, and youth are at risk of not returning to care centers, uh, schools, or university in 2020. So it's a very concrete risk now. The highest reduction is uh, actually expected at the tertiary level with, point, uh, with 5 point million students at risk. Students this level are more likely to drop out or to delay their return due to cost and dependency on part-time jobs to pay for studies. And these estimates have been uh, it's based on the IMF's and GB projection published in April 2020 and could further increase. The future of younger generation is more than ever at stake and under threat with predictions uh, on massive unemployment and loss of income from COVID-19. So the UN's policy brief released last week on the world of work predicts that equivalent of 300 million job losses in the second quarter for these years uh, alone. Failure to support university and students will result in more poverty, marginalization and social pluralization. So what do we need now? Investment in education, including higher education, must become a must in the near future. Is a condition for the human-centered, green, sustainable, and inclusive recovery, and it's something that the Secretary General has put in his own agenda. Sustainable transformation and inclusive growth are not possible without innovative tertiary education. So another very important important point I want to underline today is about the need of a strong innovation, disruptive innovation in methodology, in content, and interdisciplinary in this disciplinary approach we have to, 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 to put in practice. There are cardinal principles to build on. First and foremost, that education is a public good and a fundamental human right. The UN uh, 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda includes a specific target on providing equal access for all women and men to affordable and quality tertiary education. And furthermore, this goal takes a long, lifelong learning perspective, and it recognizes that this is only the only matter, uh, manner to go for individuals to adapt the velocity, the speed of technological change, which is affecting especially now every aspect of our lives. So, to cut it short, universities are no longer as one step stage in life. They need to provide opportunities to learn, uh, to learn throughout life and to cross cut, cut the 17 goals of the agenda. Uh, the pandemic has accentuated uh, the urgency uh, uh, to reassess uh, uh, the place of learning and knowledge creation in our societies as well. This is another important dimension. We will not overcome the current uh, education crisis without a renewed global commitment to inclusion and equity in education at all levels. There are a range of policy levers to address inequality, ranging from student subsidies for tuition, food, living or transportation, elimination registration of exam fees, uh, and academic support 
for to disadvantaged students, especially during their first year of enrollment. And in the context of the current health crisis and recovery, equity-based financing for education will be all the more necessary to provide equity, uh, equality of opportunity. I know there are refugees from Syria and other countries with us today um, and uh, uh, forced to leave the, everything uh, behind except your knowledge and ambition. And uh, I want to encourage uh, uh, to say uh, all of them in recent months, we have seen a Syrian refugee doctors in France and in other European countries on the front lines of the pandemic. Well, the recognition of prior qualification is another very important point, another foremost challenge. In the goal of promoting inclusion, and this point, uh, Specifically, UNESCO is currently piloting, as you maybe know, qualifications passport for refugees and vulnerable migrants. And this is a very important uh, outcome of the last uh, general conference at UNESCO, approved unanimously by member states. And it's a part of the global convention on the recognition of higher education qualifications. This is ultimately about the free circulation of knowledge, uh, through dependent cooperation between our regions. And uh, I, I do believe that despite the crisis we are living now, mobility in terms of uh, being free to go around, being free to, to, to disseminate our model, our culture, our, our mindset will become really a, a new, very important pillar of the recovery time. After the inclusion priority, this brings me to my second point on developing the culture of openness in international academic cooperation. Let me say that the university has been established uh, since uh, uh, to, uh, the, the, the last millennium, the beginning of last millennium, starting from some regions of the world like Europe uh, and the Arab states, exactly, in order to develop international cooperation. And this is the time to relaunch strongly this, uh, this uh, uh, unique uh, uh, feature and, uh, and uh, dimension that universities can develop more and more in the, in, the, in the near future. But orienting science for sustainable development calls also for deep shift in global priorities. Currently states, including in this region, are spending relatively little, too, too really little, on R&D to implement uh, the 2030 agenda. And I think that uh, promoting public research, development and innovation is another critical point in our discussion today. So I think that uh, uh, um, inclusion, uh, mobility, a new kind of uh, uh, innovative way to, to develop and promote science uh, between university and within university must become a real important point to be discussed in the coming months. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefania. Thank you for joining us and also um, for giving the keynote speech. I think that um, our audience will be happy to know that much of the topics you touched upon, such as strong innovation, having the culture and mindset of lifelong learning, and how higher education institutes can promote and work towards that for marginalized youth in the region. Um, we'll be focusing, and the students actually have been working on these topics. So I want to thank you um, for giving the keynote speech, firstly, and also just invite our audience. They will be able to leave the room um, if they press the little red button, the door on the left-hand corner of their screen, and then they can join immediately our next session which focuses on online learning. Could this be the new way of learning and could we reach more refugees and IDPs with online learning? So thank you so much. I'm going to exit now. Excellent. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a good day.